is Dorothy Freeman. Welcome, Dorothy. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. So let's begin your story. You were born in 1940. This is true before Pearl Harbor. Before Pearl Harbor. You know, I was about to ask about that, so you're ahead of me there. I, I don't remember Pearl Harbor, but I hear about it. Yeah. So you were born at home or in a hospital? I was born at home in Clarence Center Road. Any any help for your mom there? Yes. We had a baby nurse. Her name was Helen. And when I was born, my mother was going to name me after the baby nurse, but my father at the time thought Dorothy L'Amour was more interesting ah. than the baby nurse, so my name got changed to Dorothy. <laughs> well, you can't blame him there. She was an interesting <laughs> lady, Dorothy L'Amour. Uh, so let's get back to uh, World War II. So you, you already volunteered that you were born before <laughs> Pearl Harbor. Was anybody in your family affected by World War II? My father had several nephews who lived in Michigan, but he was very close to these boys. And the oldest son, uh, his name was Clement. They named him after my father. He was killed in World War II. It was oh very sad. I remember my father getting on the train and going to Michigan to the funeral. Oh, it, no. it was bad. Where I think was he killed? He was, I believe they were in Italy marching up to France, and almost everyone in his unit got killed. There were a couple survivors, that's all. That's terrible. It was, yeah, it was bad. So a couple of nephews, anybody else serve in no, the war? No, no. It affected everybody that It affected my, fa my father's family greatly, yeah. Yeah. Did, uh, were any of your members of your family followers of FDR? Did they like the president? They did, I believe, uh... I know they listened to his speeches, and uh, it was it was a very trying time back then. You know, uh, my father was lucky; he always had a job. I guess he he did work during the depression, and then when they got through that, and and the country went right into the war, I think it affected that generation greatly. I'm sure. Well, now that you've mentioned your father, let's go back and, and talk about your parents a little bit. So your mother was Florence. What was her maiden name? Her maiden name was Hansberger, and there are many Hansbergers in Clarence Center. My mother's family moved to Clarence Center from, I can't remember the little town in Canada. I guess they, they heard it up some of their cattle and packed up their belongings and moved to Goodrich Road. And my grandfather bought property on Goodrich Road and Clarence Center. And I believe my mother was maybe a young teenager then. She was born in 1906. So I, I think they moved to Clarence Center, I'm guessing maybe 1913 or 14. I, I'm not sure about that. Before World War One. Yeah, my father was born in, um, I believe, in the town of Wheatfield, he moved to Clarence Center Road when he was just a little a little boy. And my father, around 1908, 1909, my father and my brother and sister and I, we all attended the same little one-room schoolhouse. Oh, did it you? Was, it was on Shimerville Road, almost across from Thompson's Greenhouse. Yeah, hmm. same little school. And when they tore it down, I just couldn't believe it. I, I We lived on McNeely Road then, and I told Dennis, oh, they tore down the, my little red schoolhouse that my father went to. And my son and uh, a couple of my nephews went over, and they snuck back on the property, and they got me some bricks from the little red schoolhouse. And I still have one of the bricks. Well, that at um, least is a nice thing. Yep. It is sad to see buildings <laughs> like that torn down. I think it was time for it to go. There was no indoor plumbing. In oh, building. I see. All right. Well, that's nice. Uh, both of those last names uh, have a German origin, do they not? Correct, yes. Do you know when those two families uh, came over? My, fa uh, my, grand my father's father was born in the 1850s, and he came to this country when I believe he was around 20. He married a lady, I believe, in the, like in, I'm guessing, maybe 1892, and they had several children. And then she passed on, and he remarried, I think, around 1896. And my father was born, and his one sister who was the mother of the boys, or the one boy got killed. Oh, so. I see. And how about 
uh, from your mother's side? They moved to Clarence Center uh, when she was a teenager from Canada. But did the family, any of that family come from Germany before that? I don't know. I haven't found that information. Could be Austrian, too, I think. Could be, yeah. All right. So you grew up in Clarence Center then. Yes. And uh, only moved to Akron later. In 1965, we got married, and we bought a little house in the town of Newstead. So my children, when they were born, they came to Akron School. We never see. went to any other school but Akron. Okay. So you went uh, to school at, in Clarence Center your entire uh, high school career. Uh, do you have some fond memories from your time in school before you got married? A prom or a homecoming yes. or a first Yes, it was so far home. ago. It was so long ago. I can't remember. But yes, I don't have any bad, ex- bad memories of school. Do you have I, a favorite I was, teacher? Probably Mrs. Schmidt, Rosalie Schmidt. And what did she, she teach? She taught business. Yeah, she was nice. And she also sold insurance. And oh. when we graduated, we got a call from Rosalie. She wanted to come and congratulate us all for graduating. And uh, she had her little papers with her and signed us up. <laughs> <laughs> we all bought insurance from her. Well, that's a good businesswoman, though, was, right? Yes, smart lady. Yeah. So tell me, how did you meet your husband? His name is Dennis... We were Brennan. we were both roller skaters, and I met him roller skating. Now, you know, you're the second person <laughs> I have interviewed in the last week to tell me that they met somebody roller skating. Maybe they met Dennis, too. <laughs> <laughs> so roller, roller skating, starting, it, was big. It, it was in the 50s, yes, wasn't it? it was that, very that, popular. Yeah, 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 all right. So you are both roller skaters. He, he was good. Yeah. I was average. He was good. Oh, all right. Well, that's kind of sweet. How long did you date before you get married? We dated off and on for four years, three or four years. Okay. Now, if you ask him this, he'll tell you a different. He can't remember. Uh huh. <laughs> remember that? He can't remember. <laughs> and and when did you get married again? We got married in nineteen sixty five. Nineteen sixty five. So that's about. So we've the... been married more than fifty years. Congratulations! Thank that's you. wonderful. Some trying times, though, that you lived through here. Uh, this. The 60s was the time of Kennedy's assassination. Yeah. Do you remember where you were when that happened? When uh, John Kennedy was assassinated, I was working at Kistler Instruments. I was secretary to the purchasing agent. And when we got a call, I, I took the call from the wife of one of the engineers, and it was like disbelief. I, and I told some of the attorneys and, uh, that worked there, and they just couldn't believe it. And I said, well, it was, it can't be true. She must be wrong. And I said, well, I don't know. I'm, that's what she said. And then they, a couple of them had, you know, nobody had radios and all that then, but a couple of them made a, a phone call or two, and they found out it was true. So not much work got done that day after that. It was, no, it was a shock. Yeah. It seems like uh, everybody can tell you exactly where they were and exactly what they were doing at that moment. It's one of those things that touches all of our lives, right? It did. did. And uh, the 60s were also the time of the Vietnam War. Did you have anybody in your family affected by either the Korean conflict or the Vietnam War? We knew many young men who were drafted, and we were not close to any who tragically didn't come home. That's good. There was a young man uh, whose parents went to our church. His last name was Miller, and he's buried out uh, on Hunts Corners Road, I believe. And the veterans go out there every year on Memorial Day and pay tribute to to him, That's the right. Miller boy. And when we went, I went to um, I went with the Girl Scouts to Washington several times, and we visited the War Memorial, the wall, and. I did a, a rubbing for Mrs. Miller of the Miller boy. That's very nice. So um, you have two children? Yes. Tell me about them. My son David works at Hadley Exhibits in Buffalo. He's a model maker. He's done a lot of work in different museums around the country, the Smithsonian, all over the place. And my daughter was, is basically a, a homemaker. Each of my children have two children, so I have four adorable grandchildren. Nice. And it's fun to be a grandparent. So great. 
Because you get to send them home. Yeah, and I think <laughs> I think when Dennis and I look back, we're better grandparents than we were parents. Isn't that terrible to say that? You know, I've it, heard that before. It, it's true. I thought I made that up originally, but I guess maybe other people feel that way. No, I've heard very similar things when you before. Ra- when you raise your children, you want everything to be perfect, and you were sort of tough on them. Yeah. And when you look back... You're you're not that way with their children because their children can do no wrong. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> so so tell me about your grandchildren. So David's children. You said David has two. Yes, they each have a boy and a girl. David's son is Sam. He's a police officer now uh, with the Attica Police Department. Oh, and their daughter, his daughter Grace is starting this year in UB. She uh, completed two years in GCC. Now she's transferring over to UB. And my daughter's children, she has Vanessa, who's going into her senior year at St. Bonaventure. And their son is 11, little Danny. He rides his bicycle and helps Grandma when he comes to visit. Well, that's nice. He's wonderful. So you've had a long affiliation with the Church of Christ? Yes. Do you have any fond memories of things there? Church camp when I was young. Oh. It, it's changed a lot because the churches have gone so modern and they've changed the music. And some of us old people prefer the hymns where you sit and sing out of a hymnal. You yeah. harmonize. But most of the services now, they have the drums and they have the keyboard and they have the, the repetitious choruses, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But some of us still hang on to the old traditional services, and I I know that one of these days they will be phased out, <laughs> and we'll yeah. we'll have to conform and be nice and Maybe. go and sing with the young people. <laughs> Do you have a memory of a favorite pastor? Um, probably Ted Murray. Ted Murray and his wife Wanda years ago they quit the the preaching at Clarence and they opened up an orphanage in. Mexico, really? strictly for little children who not who were not wanted. Huh. If they would they would find little kids out on the streets that no one took care of, and they just took all these kids in for years. They they did a wonderful work with these kids. Really, it, they were wonderful, good people. Yeah, that's pretty remarkable yeah, to was. leave it was years what ago. you know. It was years ago. Wow, yeah. that's a deep faith. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the uh, Buffalo Doll Club. Years ago, uh, some friends and I started a, a doll club. We called it Buffalo Regional. It's strictly for collectors. Uh, usually when women started collecting dolls, they collected antique dolls. And some of them, the French ones, are so expensive. So you sort of swing it over... You start out with a few antique dolls, and then you say, well, when I was a kid, we had composition dolls. That's before plastic. So you buy some of those, and then uh, as you grow with your collecting, you you change, and you add more and more. And all of a sudden, you're an old woman, and you have all this stuff. <laughs> and unfortunately, the doll market has taken a, a very big dip. It, it, it's bad. So you don't get your money out of the stuff, but it's been fun. And mainly it's, uh, I've met people from all over this country because we go to a lot of conventions. Uh, last week, the big convention was in Nashville. And I didn't go only because they've gotten so expensive. Wow. But it's really been fun. Doll hmm. collecting has been great for me. So do you have a prized doll you could tell me about? No, I have a group of them by a lady who was a wonderful doll artist. She handmade each of them. Her name was Dewey's Cochran. She died in the 1990s. Her story was wonderful, uh, but her dolls are very hard to find, and I'm fortunate I have probably seven or eight really oh. nice ones. So when you narrow, when you narrow your collecting down when you're my age you can't keep all this stuff and a lot of it is just stuff so you decide well I'm going to sort this out and get rid of all that stuff but the Dewey's Cochran stuff has to remain together and I have to keep it 
Nice. All yeah. right. And stuff like that. You know, I have some, I have some favorites. That's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So the last question is probably the hardest one of all. You ready? Yeah. All right. So imagine now, a generation from now, and your grandchildren are talking to their children. And your grandchildren are telling their children about you. What would you hope they would say? I would hope one thing they would say is, Grandma was fun. She told us funny stories that probably were true. We're not going to hold it against her because she wasn't a perfect housekeeper. And we miss her. That's a very nice answer. I hope they say that. All right. And with that, I will thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for listening in, and remember to tune in to the next episode of Remembering Akron.